over the last two years or so, since I've become an indie developer, I've launched about 20 different apps. Um, seven of them have actually like, been featured on the App Store, so some of them are doing well, some of them are small stuff. Um, but for all of them, I've found this method that I use for myself, because I noticed when I was doing side projects that I would spend too much time on design, or I would like waste months trying to get it perfect, or learn fully new technologies that I've never used before, um, and that, that stopped me from actually launching and releasing these things. So I came up with this method for myself called the 222 method, where basically the very first version of whatever I'm doing, I need to be able to fix it, finish it in two hours. So if I can't like, visualize in my head, okay, these are the steps I need to do to test out this idea in two hours, then I'm not even going to do it. Because otherwise you spend so much time already at the start without actually having like, any end goal for yourself. Um, and so then when you have like, the very first proof, proof of concept, and I have some examples of what it looks like later, um, then you can actually go to the next step, which is two days. And those two days you actually make the app that you made as a proof of concept usable for your friends. So people that you trust, people that are okay with seeing rough edges, but something that people can use without these, like, these nice borders that you've made for yourself, like your hard-coded values and stuff. And again, that doesn't mean you can add a lot of new features because you only have two days. And then in the end, you have two weeks, and the two weeks is basically when you finish the app, polish it, and just release it. And not polish it as in this is the perfect app, no, just polish it so that the world can use it. Um, so that you can get feedback and so that you can learn and grow and do your two months and your two year plan afterwards. So I want to highlight five different apps um, I've made and go through how this process looked like for those apps. And along the way, I will highlight some of these marketing, design, apps not good enough kind of stuff um, along the way. So let me start with Suzy, which was actually sort of my first indie app. Um, I started this just when Corona hit, so I was doing a project, and then that project got canceled, and then it's like, oh, what am I going to do in April 2020? And then, oh, let me, let me try this out, and it was actually really nice. So I used to have this girlfriend who was allergic to oranges, and she was Australian, so she couldn't read the Dutch labels. So every time I would have to like, read the label, is there a Cena supple in here? Um, and I figured, oh, there must be a nicer way to do this. You, let me use technology for it. Um, so I was looking at this WWDC talk, which is this yearly conference that Apple does. Uh, and there was this talk there about how to recognize a phone number. So they had sample code, which basically allowed you to point it at a, um, at a business card, and it would recognize the, the phone number. Um, so what I did is I went through the code. I didn't understand anything about text recognition. I didn't understand anything about what the code was actually doing at that point. But I found the little code that did the, the, um, the recognition of the phone number. Um, and I changed it to just search for the word egg, like I in Dutch. And this is a nice, strange aspect ratio video, but you could then point it at like a label and you see this little squiggly line there, or milk actually, milk. Um, and it would highlight it. So this showed to me, okay, this idea is possible. I don't have to know exactly how I'm going to do that, but this two hour thing was, all right, let me take this existing project, change maybe 10 lines of code, and make it work for my thing. So that's the two, the two hour thing. So then, how do I get from there to something that works like this? Um, it starts with just small iterations, so that's what the two days are for. So something simple like recognizing multiple strings of text at the same time, and like highlighting them depending on which category they belong to. Um, simple things, still the same code base, so it's, it's still the, the text recognition library that I used from Apple Sample, but now with multiple categories, like very hacked together. It's not, it's not fully thought out how it's going to work, because that's not the point of these two days. The point of these two days is can you make something useful that other people can also try out. And then the two weeks after that was basically me getting feedback from people in Facebook groups. So I reached out to some groups that are working with uh, people with allergies, like, all right, what should I add? Um, so it was things like making it clear that certain words were recognized because you, you want to know, okay, is there milk in this or is there sugar in this? Uh, you can see some, some design. Um, at some point here, I made the mistake of trying to redesign this screen like three, four days in a row. doesn't really matter. Just make the simplest version and you can always iterate on it later because it's very easy to get stuck on... Um, on spending too much time trying to make it perfect. So in the end, I just went back to a more like native iOS look and feel because there was a lot of easy stuff that I could reuse there. And then in the end, it actually ended up becoming uh, like a fully functional app. Um, 
that you can use to yeah, scan. You can say, hey, I'm allergic to this or that, and then it, it like recognizes that. And a lot of the code that's in there is still from that sample project from Apple. And to show, this is the actual project for, for Suzy, and as you can see here, the project name is still CloudKit UI Test. And I tried to change it at some point, but everything broke. So it's like, okay, it's CloudKit UI Test. Um, but something that starts like that can, can actually go a long way if, if it solves a problem. So there were clear problems that it was solving for people with allergies. So it even became app of the day at some point, um, which like, was always like a goal of mine, but not like my intention when I made this app, like, right, let me get all these features. 